Okay, so today's class, it won't actually be long. I'm going to be a bit short today. So I'm going to do forces of attraction. I will go through it and work a past paper, all right? I will tell you when again we will meet to do the other topics. All right, so for tonight, I'm just going to do forces of attraction and work some questions. All right, so for forces of attraction, I will specifically start out with the intermolecular force of attraction. So force of attraction, it's a broad, it's a big topic. So I will start by looking at intermolecular force of attraction. All right, so intermolecular forces, these are hydrogen bonding, van der Waals, and permanent dipole. All right, so first, intermolecular force, it's a, the attraction between molecules. So it's not the actual bond within a compound. So for example, in water, This is a covalent bond, all right? So that is not an intermolecular force. But between two molecules of water, I soon explain how we get these negative and positive charges. So between the hydrogen and the oxygen, there will be an attraction. So this is the intermolecular force, which is hydrogen bond. All right, so this is the intra, well, this is inter between two molecules not within. So I just want to make that distinction, all right? So we are looking at intermolecular forces and the three of them, hydrogen bond, van der Waals forces and permanent dipole. So the first thing I'm going to do is explain the term dipole and how we get it, all right? So dipole, and I will get back to hydrogen bonding. All right, so when you have a covalent compound, right? All right, let's just look at a covalent bond. So a bond between two non-metals. Now, if you have a bond between carbon and hydrogen, right? It's covalent. 
So we know that the electrons are being shared, right? However, these electrons, they are not shared equally. Was someone asking a question just now? All right, so these two electrons, they are not shared equally. So when we're going to explain this term dipole also, I want to add the term polar and non-polar. So to understand the intermolecular forces, we need to understand the term polar and non-polar, which will give rise to the dipole, all right? So polar and non-polar, it will come about because of a next term, which is electronegativity. All right, so to understand the whole intermolecular force, we're going to look at first electronegativity, and that is what will lead to bonds being polar and nonpolar. So oxygen is a very electronegative atom. So if it is very electronegative, that means it will pull onto electrons strongly. Hydrogen is not, is not, it, it's not, electronegative, all right? To an extent like oxygen. So the electrons, they are not going to be shared equally. They will be very close to oxygen. So I'm, so I'm going to move it closer to oxygen. So with the electrons this close to oxygen, it, the electron density has basically increased. So the oxygen atom will develop a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen atom, it will develop a slightly positive charge. All right. Or you can say a negative pole and a positive pole. All right. So now because you have two pole, we have a dipole. So we have just gotten a dipole because one atom is electronegative and the next one is not. So when you have electronegative atom bonded to one that is not, the bond is going to be polar, all right? And so we get a dipole because of the positive end and the negative end two poles, that is a dipole. So once you have a dipole, the molecule is said to be polar. All right. Now, over here where we speak of permanent dipole, the electrons at no point in time are going to move over to hydrogen. All right, so because they are not going to move over to hydrogen at any point in time, it means that this will remain forever, right? So it's permanent. So this here is a permanent dipole. All right. So I'm just going to put some pointers on how we got the permanent dipole. Permanent.
Continuing it over here. All right, so that is how we get a permanent dipole. I'm going to give you a minute or two and then we continue. Okay, ready again. You can take a picture if you're not completed. All right. So we have just figured out how we get permanent dipoles. Now hydrogen bonding is basically a special case of permanent dipole-dipole interaction. All right, so let's look back at the molecule of water.
So remember now for hydrogen bonding. All right, let me just. Hold on. So remember now, once you have hydrogen, don't have to be hydrogen, once you have an atom that is bonded to a more electronegative atom, that bond is going to be polarized. So the oxygen is slightly negative, hydrogen is slightly positive. So when you get a compound, if you see hydrogen atom directly bonded to an electronegative atom, you can have hydrogen bonding. But the hydrogen must be attached directly to the atom. All right, so this is how you get hydrogen bonding being produced. So that's hydrogen bonding. I'm going to do one with permanent dipole, the dipole interaction. All right, so for example, if you have carbon, let's say we have carbon bonded to fluorine. All right, so. Let's say I have this compound, right? The fluorine, it will be slightly negative and the carbon will be slightly positive. So this bond is polar. So in this, you have a permanent dipole. It will not be hydrogen bonding because the hydrogen is not bonded to fluorine. So HF, that would be hydrogen bonding because the hydrogen is directly attached to the electronegative atom. If hydrogen is not directly attached to it, it is not hydrogen bonding, all right? So this compound, it will not do hydrogen bonding. You will have permanent dipole, dipole. Mm -hmm. So hydrogen bonding is a special case of permanent dipole, dipole, where in one molecule, the hydrogen atom is bonded to an, an electronegative atom, right? And they have a second molecule where hydrogen is bonded to an electro 
negative atom, all right? And so we have an attraction between the hydrogen in one of the molecules to the electronegative atom in the next molecule. That is the hydrogen bonding. Outside of that, you will call it permanent dipole-dipole forces, all right? So for example, that same compound, right? let me just erase this part. So let's draw a book. So the carbon is slightly positive. that is slightly negative. So that means if I have a next one, right? Let's put, put the H's. There can be an attraction between the positive carbon and the negative fluorine. Right, so that attraction, that's the permanent dipole, dipole. All right, so you get permanent dipole, dipole. All right, let me put that. Sir? Yes? But, um, how does the carbon, the top one ever is the, the CH3, how does the carbon in that get a slightly positive charge? Is it like neutral or something? No, were you here when I was explaining the case with oxygen and hydrogen? Yes, sir. It's the same thing. So remember carbon, so, so let's just look at carbon and fluorine. The electrons, when they share them, because fluorine is electronegative, so electronegativity is the ability of the atom to pull electrons towards itself. So because chlorine is very electronegative, the electrons will not be shared equally between carbon and fluorine. So what will happen, fluorine is going to pull the electrons closer towards itself. So it's because of this uneven or unequal <laughs> sharing. Can I come and I stay around as a hat? Come on, guy, do a way about me just send that my food. Please, hat. All right, let me continue now. Right, so it's because of this unequal sharing of electrons, right, where they are very close to oxygen, sorry, fluorine. The fluorine develops a slightly negative charge. No, carbon is electron deficient. So it gets the slightly positive charge.
directory request. <laughs> All right, so the, the person that asked the question, you understand now? Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So once you see, it's typically in, especially in these cases, it's, you will typically get carbon and hydrogen bonded to an, bonded to an electrical negative atom. So once you see carbon with group five, six, or seven, or hydrogen with group five, six, or seven in the first row. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, all right? Every chlorine from the third row in the periodic table, it will be polar, all right? So if you want to make a list, these are the most popular ones. So fluorine, you have nitrogen, oxygen, and you can add chlorine to the mix, all right? So once you see hydrogen or carbon bonded to any of those, it is going to be polar, all right? So in this, when the molecule, so if you have a bond that is polar, we consider the entire molecule as, we just said the molecule is polar, all right? But you see, if this, I'm going to show you a little later with some other examples. So a molecule, depending on the size, it can be both polar and non-polar. So it can have a polar group. For example, like fats, where you have the carboxylic acid group, the COOH, that part is polar. But the rest of the hydrocarbon tail is non-polar. And we will see how that affects it being it acting as a solvent, all right? But for now, permanent dipole dipole, it occurs when you have an atom bonded to. You can add in covalent because these are all covalent compounds. So when you have an atom covalently bonded to an electron negative atom, all right? So that is the starting of permanent dipoles. You must have an atom covalently bonded to an electronegative atom, right? So that the charge is un or the electrons is unequally shared, right? So that is what is causing the slightly negative and positive charges, the, in the unequal sharing of electron. And that will only come about because of the because of one of the atoms being electro, highly electro negative. All right. So CCH3F, that would be permanent dipole dipole. All right. So let me erase this with water and continue. All right, so let me see, where was there? All right, so an atomic bond there too, an electron negative. An atom is bonded to an electron negative. You should have atom right here as well. So an atom is bonded to an electron negative atom in a compound. This same thing happens in a second compound. All right, so that is the example here. So carbon is bonded to an electronegative atom. The same thing happens, all right? So let's do that. So, well, it's basically here. So the same thing happens in a second compound. And finally, so the third point, so this is point one, point two, point three. Thank you. 
and so that is it. And so again, I'm going to give you a minute, and then I and then we look at Vandawa's forces, which is the same as London dispersion forces, if you are familiar with that term. All right, so I'm going to clear the screen and explain how we get Van der Waals forces. All right, so to explain Van der Waals forces of attraction, the first thing I need to do is explain temporary dipoles. I am familiar with Van der Waals forces, not the other. That's okay, the, the, the one we refer to at Cape is Van der Waals. So that's okay. All right, so temporary dipoles. So if you notice, permanent dipoles come about when we have polar compounds. So the temporary ones are going to come from non-polar compounds. The, the person that just asked that question, the answer is no, the same thing. When we say dipole, dipole, it's just referring to the interaction between the two dipoles from separate molecules. So it's not different. All right, so these are from nonpolar compounds. All right, so for this one, this is how we explain it, right? So let's say you have chlorine, Cl2, all right? And I'm going to use a diagram to explain this. So the in a molecule, the electrons are constantly in motion, all right? So the proposed explanation for this is that the molecules, sorry, not the molecules, the electrons are constantly in motion. So if there is random movement of electrons, then at some point in time, all right? So let us say after, and this is just for explanation purposes. So let us say the molecule started out like this, right? After 50 seconds, we have more electrons to one side of the molecule, all right, than the next. It means that the side with more electrons or the higher electron density, it will develop a slightly negative charge. And the side that is electron deficient, it will have a slightly positive charge. So as you can see here, we have a dipole. But remember the key thing here is that the electrons are in constant motion. Unlike the permanent dipole, let me just do that again, right? When you have oxygen and hydrogen, the oxygen 
pulls the electrons closer to itself. The electrons are going to stay there. They are not moving back away from oxygen. That means this stays slightly negative. This will stay slightly positive. So it is permanent. With this one, the electrons are going to be moving. So when the electrons move from this side and come over, you can get back this initial diagram here. So let us say after 90 seconds, it goes back to looking like this, where the electrons are evenly distributed. So if you look up here. So we started out with no dipoles. After 50 seconds, more electrons were to this side. So it developed a slightly negative charge and this, was, this side developed a slightly positive charge. But so we got a dipole. But this dipole is not permanent, it is temporary. So we get our temporary dipole from the move from from the random movement of electrons in non-polar compounds all right so that's temporary dipole the next form of dipole i must explain is induced all right Now I'm going to put a neutral molecule again, all right? So this right here, we were just looking at what happened to one molecule. So let us look at a second one now. If it comes close to the negative end of this one. So again, you would have the electrons being evenly distributed all right now if it comes close to this negatively charged end with the surplus of electrons there will be a push on the on the electrons here repelling them all right so what is going to happen is that these electrons at this side they are forced down to this end all right, so before the molecule was neutral, no charge. The excess electrons here pushes the electrons down to this side of the molecule. All right, so what that means is that we will not have a lot of electrons at, at this end. All right, so I'm going to leave one up there, but I'm going to put most of them to this side. So that means this side will develop a slightly positive charge and this one developed a slightly negative charge. This one. Yes, I am explaining, right, but it is Van der Waals forces, but to get to Van der Waals forces, you need to understand how we get temporary dipole and induced. All right. So the temporary dipole. All right, so remember for this, so I'm just answering a question that was texted. So the surplus of electrons at this end of this molecule is repelling the electrons from this molecule when it gets close to it. So right here we have electron repulsion. So the molecule, the electron in this one is pushed to the next side. So once you have a great amount of electrons to one side, that is when you get the negative charge. And on this side, it is electron deficient. Right. 
So the reason why we use the term induced, it was not a natural dipole. It, it did not form randomly. It was forced. So because it was a forced dipole, we say it was induced because it was due to the repulsion of the electrons to one side of the molecule that created this, this dipole. So it was induced, all right? Now, in inter, from what you have been seeing with intermolecular forces, right? Once you get a slightly negative end close to a slightly positive end, there will be an attraction. And we use broken line to show the attraction. So this attraction between a, the negative end of a temporary dipole and the positive end of an induced dipole, that is the Van der Waals force of attraction. All right. So this attraction, so this right here, this attraction, that's Van der Waals. And it is the weakest one. But so isn't this like always breaking, always farming? That is correct. I was going to mention that as well. So when you have it here, sorry, give me a second. One of those forces. I'm just making a note that it is the weakest. Now, if you go as this, as the person said a while ago, right? They are always breaking and reforming. And the reason for that, remember that the electrons are always in motion. So the electrons here, right? If they should move over, will we still have the negative charge here? Anyone want to offer an answer? If the electrons, if the surplus of electrons- No, sir, no, sir. Right, because if the electrons move, then you cannot have the negative charge here. The reason why we got the negative charge here is because there was a surplus of electrons. So if they move over, the negative charge moves, or it's, it's gone now. And so you, you, will no, you will no longer have that attraction. So as you said, it would break and reform. Let me see this person, All right. All right, so let's just go over Van der Waals, right? First, it occurs in nonpolar molecules. The electrons we say are in constant motion. So at some point in time, you will have a surplus of electrons to one side of the molecule. When that happens, it will that side will have a slightly negative charge. The other side will develop a slightly positive charge. All right, and that is your temporary dipole. So temporary comes from the random movement of electrons. Now the induced dipole is when a neutral molecule, that is, it does not have a dipole. It approaches the temporary dipole, all right? We will have electron, electron repulsion, right? So the electrons now are pushed to one side of the molecule, causing a dipole. Now, this dipole was induced due to the electron repulsion, all right? Then now what you will have is the interaction between your temporary dipole and the induced dipole. That interaction is Van der Waals forces, and it is the weakest one, all right? So induced dipole is not the same thing as temporary. No. So remember, temporary, well, it is still temporary in about, in terms of how it came about. So the temporary, it was came about because of the random movement. So let me just do this one again here. So there's a little difference between the temporary and the induced. This one is just about the random movement. When the neutral molecule came here, 
All right. Remember it came without a dipole. All right, so let me just put in some electrons. All right. So when it came close to the negative end of this molecule, the electrons here, the surplus, was pushing against or, or repelling the electrons in these, so it pushing them further down into the molecule. So the electrons are being pushed to this side. So it was not a random movement, it was forced. So because it was forced, we say it was induced. So when the electrons are forced to this side, this side develops a slightly negative charge and this one develops a slightly positive charge. So this one was induced. This one was random, so we say temporary. All right, hope that was a bit clear. All right, so let me just move the electrons down. All right. All right, so let me put it in words for you. All right, so you can have it to read.
All right, I'm going to work a question. I'm not sure which year it came from. Well, before I do that, I'm going to, let's look at, I'm going to show you about dative covalent bonding. So I know you're familiar with covalent bonding, which takes place between two non-metals. All right, if you're not finished writing, just take a picture of the screen. I'm going to clear the screen.
that is that is correct. I am replying to someone that texted. All right, so as we said, dative, in dative, COVID, so in regular covalent bonding, each atom would share an electron. So ammonia is regular covalent bonding, right? Where each hydrogen atom shared electron with the nitrogen atom. However, in dative covalent bonding now, one atom is donating both of the electrons. So for example, the hydrogen ion, it does not have any electron to form a bond. So if ammonia wants to form a bond, it will donate both of its electron to this hydrogen ion. And so you would end up with NH4 plus. All right, so these two electrons would be given to the hydrogen ion, all right? So that is how you would get NH4. So that's the dative covalent bonding. All right, so I want to get to this possible thing. All right, so I want to get to this question now on, on dative on intermolecular forces. So the first one, it asked for us to define with an example, dative covalent bonding. And dative covalent bonding, it is the same thing as coordinate covalent bonding. So if you want to say dative or coordinate covalent bonding, it's the same thing. So you would give a definition and an example. All right, the other part I want to get to know to see if you are understanding the intermolecular forces. Right, before I give you the past paper, let me give you an example and see how you do it. All right, so we have ammonia. I don't need to draw it out. All right, so we have ammonia. I'm going to put, oh, one more thing. Remember I told you that like, if you have carbon with oxygen, a uh, carbon with an electronegative atom, right? That compound would be polar. I need to point out that. All right, so I'm point it out. I'm going to use CCl4. All right, I'm going to just put it this way. If, the, if it's an even, so I realize if it's an even number, so the simplest way to tell it, for you to just remember it, even if you have C, I'm going to put CO2. All right, I'm going to put CHCl3. Two of these compounds are actually nonpolar, and one is polar. Just give me a second to plug in my laptop. All right, so this one is nonpolar. This is nonpolar. This is polar. I'm going to explain why. So dipoles can cancel each other. All right. So the easiest way to, to let you get it for now, just know that if the numbers are even, they cancel. So this dipole cancels this one. All right, so slightly negative, slightly negative, slightly negative, slightly negative. These two cancel each other. 
the one above and below cancels each other. Right now? Sir, we cannot see what you're writing. I cannot. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop sharing and reshare. Hold on, you can see it. Someone said yes. We can see art. All right, so once you have an even number of your, someone say they can't, no, no. Oh, you cannot see what I'm art, let me see. I'm going to, I'm, I have a, I'm switching to black ink. So tell me if you can see an X I put on the screen just now. No, sir. All right. I'm going to stop share and reshare. All right. Can you see the all right, I'm switching to red ink. Can you see a red X on the board? Yes, yes, see it now. Are you only seeing the red X or everything else on the board? You see in the black everything. and the red. Please repeat. Oh, only the two X's you're seeing? Yes, sir, we're seeing it now, like it load properly. So we can see everything now? All right, so yes. are you seeing C, CL4 to the vivid? To the yes, sir. okay, yes, sir. Good. all right, right, good. All right, so I was saying that this chlorine, the dipole from this one, cancels wow. this one, and the one above cancels out this one. So all the dipoles can this should not be positive, this should be negative. All right, so they cancel each other, so you basically have a molecule that is non-polar because there are no dipoles present. So that is why I said, once it's an even number, so just look out for that on the exam. If it's an even number, you it will not be a dipole. When I say even number, even number for your electronegative atom. And it has to be the same electronegative atom. So for example, carbon dioxide, how many oxygen are attached to it? So for carbon dioxide, they have two oxygen. So that means the dipoles will cancel. So it is non-polar. However, carbon monoxide will be polar because there's no canceling, all right? CA3Cl. Cl. It's an odd number, so one of them will not be cancelled. All right. So that, that is why I said, hold on, sir, can you repeat what you just said about even number? All right. So earlier in the class, I told you that. Once you have like carbon bonded to and highly electronegative atom, like oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, it is going to be polar, all right? But we have to pay attention to the amount that is bonded. So for example, you have fluorine attached to carbon. We have to look at the amount because it's important. So CCl4, once you see C and Cl, you would say, okay, it's polar because it's chlorine, but it's actually not polar because it's four chlorine atoms. And so the dipoles formed are going to cancel each other out. These two cancel, these two cancel. So if it's an even number, they will cancel. But if it's an odd number, not everything will cancel out. One will always remain. So that one will be polar. So the same thing for us. Well, go ahead. Can you please go go over that? Go over it, please. I, I didn't I didn't hear you. 
Can you please go over what we're talking about, please? Okay. All right. So just to keep it simple, when you have electronegative atoms bonded to your atom that is not, if it's an even number, right, all the dipoles will cancel. If you do not have any dipole in your molecule, it is nonpolar. So this chlorine is slightly negative, right? So that should make it polar. But this one down here cancels it. So, so none of them will have a negative charge, all right? This chlorine and this one out here cancels out each other. So neither of them will have a negative charge. So you don't have any dipole in this molecule because each one cancel the other. So it's like a pair of them canceling out each other. So you don't have any dipole re remaining. So I was just saying that for you to remember it or just to get it for, for now, right? Because it's not, I'm just revising. I just want you to know that if you say an even number for your electronegative atoms, know that they're going to cancel each other. So you will not end up with a dipole. So CCL4, you have four chlorine atoms bonded to carbon. That molecule is not going to be polar because the four chlorine will cancel each other. CO2 is not going to be polar because the dipole from these two oxygen cancels each other. Now, in this one, you have three chlorine atoms. Three chlorine atoms cannot cancel out each other. Two of them will cancel each other, and you still have one remaining. So that molecule will be polar. All right, so if you spot an odd number, it will be polar. If it's even, it is going to be nonpolar. And remember, they have to be attached to the same atom. You know? All right. So CCL4 is nonpolar, but CHCl3, that is polar because not all the dipoles cancel. Is that clear? Yes, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Even polar. Yeah. So remember, you know, all right, just let me say it again. Technically, these compounds would have been polar. Let's say to start out with, they would have been polar, but then they cancel out each other. So they become non-polar. All right. So the question now, these compounds, right? Which one, all right, so can you tell me the intermolecular force of attraction that would be in CCL4? So remember, we have hydrogen bonding, we have the permanent dipoles, and we have van der Waals force, which is from the nonpolar compounds. All right, so which one do you think is in CCL4? If you don't want to speak, you can text. All right, so let me see. Permanent dipole. Mm -mm. If you said permanent dipole, you missed what I said. Van der Waals is correct. Van der Waals. Right. All right, so let me tell you, so it cannot be, again, I know why you said permanent, because of the chlorine. But remember, if you look at the, the diagram here, I am letting you know that. The, the charges on the chlorine atom will cancel each other. So if you see four chlorine atom on a carbon, they cancel. So look, all right, let me do it this way. This chlorine cancel that one, as in the charge. This one cancel this one, all right? So it's nonpolar. Right. So don't, so don't let this side 
of an electronegative atom trick you into putting permanent dipole. Look at the amount that is there. So for this one, this, take out this one. All right. Ba bam, bam. But nothing is there to get rid of this negative one. So it is still polar. So carbon is slightly positive. This chlorine is slightly negative. So we have a permanent dipole in this one. Right, Van der Waal is the answer. All right, so A, all right, so let, let me just label them A, B, C. All right, so A, we said it's Van der Waals, so that, that's correct. What about B? All right, so for B, Vandawas, right, Vandawas is correct because again it is non polar. Vandawas. All right, and what about CH3CL? C. All right. Permanent dipole, right, that is correct. All right, so I'm going to put PD for permanent dipole. All right, I'm going to add one more. <clears throat> ammonia. What would it be for ammonia? All right, before, hold on, before you answer B, someone said O for part C. So let me just do that quickly. All right. So C, we have carbon with a hydrogen with a chlorine chlorine and chlorine slightly negative slightly negative slightly negative the carbon is slightly positive this chlorine is canceling out this one but unlike in ccl4 there is no more chlorine to cancel this one so this dipole remains. So this permanent dipole where carbon is slightly positive and this chlorine is slightly negative, it is still in existence. So that is why it is polar or a dipole. And once you have a dipole, and NH3 is Van der Waals and hydrogen bonding. No dipole because they will be cancelled. I remember about the no remember with the that with the dipole your electron negative atoms. All right, so you are correct. So the main so how the exam will set up are they tend to ask you for the main ones because well I should mention all of them are the in Van der Waals forces. So every molecule will have Van der Waals force. So the exam will answer for the main ones. So for NH3, what would be the main one? The main intermolecular force? Hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding, right. So remember for hydrogen bonding, once you have hydrogen bonded to an electronegative atom, you will have hydrogen bonding, all right. So I'm going to give it a um, yes. Uh, Go ahead. Hydrogen bond is between like two of the same molecules, right? I know the two same, but like. Hold on, please repeat that. Like, like one water molecule, another water molecule. Hydrogen bond. If it has to be between two of the same molecules. Yeah. No. It can be. So for example, it could be ammonia and water. Right, so let me just do it over here quickly. All right, so if you have water, all right, slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly positive, and you have ammonia, the nitrogen would be slightly negative, 
and you have these hydrogens, right? From the positive charges. Once you have negative and positive charge ends in opposite molecules, they can attract. So it's not like it has to be strictly water molecules, all right? So it can be two different molecules. As long as in those two molecules, you have hydrogen atom bonded to an electronegative atom. You can have hydrogen bonding. Right. So as it doesn't matter which two compounds, as long as hydrogen is with a very electronegative atom, hydrogen bonding can take place. But it's just that with the questions now, they will only give you one molecule and ask you for the type of bonding that would occur. So in ammonia, so amongst ammonia molecules, you would have hydrogen bonding between the hydrogen atom of one ammonia molecule and the nitrogen atom of a next one. Also remember, this is not a covalent bond, it's just an attraction. So when you boil substances, let me just mention this. Melting and boiling, right? We are breaking. So for these intermolecular forces, when we heat them, we are breaking the intermolecular forces. We are not breaking the actual covalent bond. So like when you boil water, you are not breaking the bond between, you are not breaking the covalent bond between oxygen and hydrogen. You are breaking the attraction between hydrogen of one water molecule with, with, with the oxygen atom of a next one. All right. All right, so let's just work this question. All right. As I said, I won't spend long tonight. All right, I'm going to clear all the screens. So if you want to take any picture, go ahead. All right, so I'm going to put three compounds on the board now. All right, so hold on. Just remember now, hydrogen bonding is the strongest. So when it comes to boiling point and melting point, hydrogen bonding will be the strongest one, followed by temporary, sorry, followed by permanent dipoles, and lastly, Van der Waals forces. All right. So just bear that in mind. All right, so this is compound A. Excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. Could you what you said, please? All right, so in terms of strength of the intermolecular force, hydrogen bonding is the strongest intermolecular force of attraction. Hold on, give me a second. So hydrogen bonding is the strongest. After hydrogen bonding, it's the permanent dipole. So the reason why I put the dipole, dipole, because remember it's the interaction between two permanent that dipoles, that will be the attraction. And then, so, then you will have Van der Waals, which is the weakest. And remember, this is for, for non-polar compounds. And this one is for polar compounds. 
hydrogen bonding is also polar, but this time it's hydrogen with electron negative atom. So in the three diagrams, these are the things we are going to look out for. So that's compound B. So you have to arrange them in order of increasing boiling point with the, with the lowest boiling point first. All right, so that's A, B, and C. So remember, arrange them in terms of boiling point. All right, let me write it down. You can text me your answers. All right, so if you're finished and want to share them, you can do so. All right, so let me see some of these answers. All right. Let's see. Remember, hydrogen bonding is the strongest. All right. That is correct. Um, regarding to Christine. No, it's ethanol, not propanol. The second one. The second one. It's ethanol. I'm not sure which year it is. It's, it's from a booklet. Let me check. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, it's propanol. Yeah, it's propanol. But it wouldn't change, it wouldn't change the answer, even though it's propanol. All right, so I'm going to fix it. Hold on. Oh, so it was this, all right. All right, so I'm seeing most persons saying C, B, A. I'm, right, I'm seeing C, B, A for, for most persons. One person said C, A, B. The C, A, B person is correct. That's so one so person. C, A, B. Right. So, all right, so let us see what they asked. Are place substance A, B, and C in order of increasing boiling point. That means you place the one with the lowest boiling point first. Everybody start out with C, which is good. That means everyone can identify Van der Waals forces. So everyone see that it's carbon and hydrogen. That's a nonpolar compound. All right, so this is nonpolar, and once it's non, hold on, all right, once it's nonpolar, it will be Van der Waals forces. Now it seems they are mixing up the permanent dipole with hydrogen bonding. I'm not sure. All right, so let's look at A. We have carbon bonded to an oxygen atom. So that's permanent dipole, not hydrogen bonding. And if you look at how we rank them, hydrogen bonding is the strongest, right? So strongest, weakest, hydrogen bonding is the strongest. Van der Waals is the weakest. Go ahead. Um, the question is in, in order of increasing boiling point. The one right. the highest boiling point to go long. At the top. As we said, we said the C, we said the... So you would start with the weakest one, then the intermediate, then the highest, right? Yeah. So we don't go the other way around. The weakest one would be um, the one that the have, the OH. As in, so OH would come at the end. As in C, A, then B. From the lowest to the highest. Why the alcohol? Um, alcohol one. No. Remember, alcohol of hydrogen bonding. The the OH. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So this is right. So this is it right here. Mm -hmm. So the alcohol as in hydrogen bonding. And this is your propanone, right? It's permanent dipole. So this one have been permanent, permanent dipole. This one is hydrogen bonding. All right. And as we said, this one was Van der Waals force. So we know that Van der Waals is the weakest, hydrogen is the strongest. All right. And so this one is in between. All right. So I could explain oh, C is not hydrogen bonding. Oh, C. Oh, so C, remember for hydrogen bonding, you want it to be, hydrogen should be with a very electronegative atom. Carbon is not that, all right? So the reason why C is not hydrogen bonding, the, the electronegativities of carbon and hydrogen are close, all right? So hydrogen must be with a very electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, all right? Carbon is not that electronegative to cause any uneven sharing of electrons. So that is why it is nonpolar. So in with the CH bond, 
electron negativity is similar. So there's no uneven sharing of electron to cause one atom to be slightly positive and the next to be slightly negative. All right. All right. I'm actually going to end here. All right. So when I pick up, I want to do some energetics and atomic structure. The two for this, the broad topics that they choose, they are really broad if you check this syllabus. All right. So I'm not sure, probably sometime Monday or Tuesday, just I'm going to use the same link. All right. But so just look out. I'm not sure who gave you the link, but I check the notification tab. Not notification, community, community section on the channel. So I will just make a notice when again. All right. But I will have to do at least, I'm not sure of the time as yet. All right. So just, just keep an eye out. All right. But I will. I will have to do some for, I still have to do some for module three. I need to do rates for module two and some more for module one. I cannot promise a marathon because I really have a lot doing, all right? But I will do at least transition metal for module three and I will do rates for module two and then Energetics, I want to touch some energetics, but I will see how much I can get done. All right. So I'm going to end it here. All right, so just keep an eye out and I will keep you posted. All right, so have a good night. All right, yeah, later. Yeah. All right. Excuse me, sir. Thanks, sir. Go ahead. Sir, what is the name of the channel? Just type in Mr. Here Lectures on YouTube. All right. All right, let me put it. I'm just sorry. All right, so it's Mr. Here. Just H A R E on Lectures. All right. The live, this class, it will be saved. Just click on playlist. And you are going to see a heading says, Unit 1 came live sessions. And there are videos from last year too, with some past papers and stuff. Just click on the playlist. It will be more useful if you click on the playlist. You're welcome. All right. All right. So I'm going to end the meet now. So have a good night, everybody. All right. And just keep an eye out for when I'm going to do a next one.